Welcome to the In My Opinion Show with Ronald Barry Robinson and Friends. With us, we have Mr. Henry Hatter. Hi. We have Got Miss Jackie Williams. <laughs> you forgot who he was. <laughs> you surprised me. <laughs> we have Miss Denise Smith Allen. Hi, Ron. How, how's everybody? Great. <laughs> and welcome all our millions of viewers worldwide. <clears throat> Let's talk about the death penalty. Should it be should 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 it be reinstated in Michigan? Father kills his wife, two children, and then kills his two biological children, then slices and bound his bound wife's throat. Now this has just been going on too much, not just in this incident, but but around Michigan where boyfriends is, uh, have, have, have slaughtered their, 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 their girlfriend's uh, uh, children and, you know, and vice versa. Um, um, I know when I was working uh, in, the, uh, in the system, there was this lady that, uh, that, that put her, ch her baby in, a, in a, a microwave oven. And another time there was a lady that uh, put her uh, children in, uh, in a washing machine all this resulted in death. Uh, this heinous uh, situation uh, has got to stop. And I know Michigan does not have the death penalty, but you know, in certain instances, instances it should it should be uh, reinstituted. Okay, I'm not saying that that will stop any of this heinous these these heinous acts, but maybe it might put something on on people's minds that hey, look. Uh, you you know, if you do things like that, then you got to you got to pay the ultimate price. Period, and me personally, uh, if I had a choice, I would not have a problem uh, pulling a switch on one of these rascals. Okay, male or female, mm -hmm. I would not. Okay, their life would end uh, uh, real soon. If you were in China or Korea or, or, or North Korea or something like this, you probably get a bullet to the back of the head, and and maybe that's what some of these people. I don't advocate violence, but maybe this maybe this is what uh, some people need here. Uh, Denise, what's your? Do uh, you have any uh, anything to say about that? I do because one of the things I'm listening to is that you just said I don't advocate violence, but in the sense that a person would be uh, placed in a situation where they would be uh, involved with the death penalty or be the receiver of death penalty, that is uh, the ultimate in in the violent act. Um, <clears throat> it's unfortunate. It's really sad. It's it's unbelievable that at this day and time that we have people who are so um, angry, enraged, mentally disturbed. There's a litany of other uh, adjectives that I could describe to think about a person who would take the life of innocent children that have nothing to do with the situation. Most times it's because the spouses are at it. Maybe someone wants to file for a divorce or something like that. So in order to get back at the, uh, the, the opposing spouse, they want to do something that's horrible and irreversible. Now, again, um, my concern in that particular case where the woman was um, who lost her own uh, biological children and then there were some stepchildren involved, uh, the husband had already had a history. And so a lot of times when uh, some of the women who get involved with men like that, uh, it's not like she probably didn't know, more than likely she did know that he came from that kind of violent past. And a lot of times it is women who have low self-esteem or have issues about thinking, well, you know, he's handsome, whatever the case may be, and I can change him. I can fix him. I can help him. He becomes a project. Okay, but oh, when sad. the mm -hmm. project uh, kind of implodes, then it's time to escape. But at that point, you have a maniac on your hands. And if you are not careful, like with this woman's situation, uh, she ends up being a statistic and her children also end up becoming um, unfortunate statistics in this situation. So what can we do? I don't know that death penalty is the answer because what we'll have ultimately is the person who did the heinous acts, they will be gone. And so they won't do it again, but you will still have others that will be out here. We have serious mental health issues in this country and we have to address it. We have to have some type of comprehensive um, screening and all of that that is going to help because when you have bad economic times, it brings out the worst in people and that's part of the problem as well. So I could continue on with this, but I would just say at this point, I don't know that the death penalty would solve the problem. You have not answered the question. 
<clears throat> the answer, the question is, should it be reinstituted? And I said, I don't believe that it would solve the problem. You have not answered the question, yes or no? The answer is no. I okay. don't see okay. it answering the qu question. I said it. Okay. I did it I did politically it. correct, yeah. okay. if you will. <clears throat> What's your thoughts, Henry? Well, I agree with Denise, uh, believe it or not. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I, I, it's sad to kill a person mm -hmm. that's not in the right frame of mind. Well, and he wouldn't a have woman, to worry about it A woman it no puts a baby in a microwave or puts a baby in a washing machine. What was she thinking? She wasn't. Uh, was that a case of mental illness? Maybe the child should have been taken from her if we had no. Mm -hmm. But we don't always know these things. Mm -hmm. And instituting the death penalty is just like you say, you would kill a person, move that person from the scene, but then mm -hmm. another the sewer still fills up and bubbles up. And you know, and then there's a, there was another yeah. incident, a couple more incidents that come to mind, all right? This one, this lady uh, 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 killed her uh, her children and, and, and put one, and, you know, and they found one in a, in a freezer, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And there was another incident where a, a, a father marched his son out into a field and shot him in the back of the head, okay? Uh, you know, this, this you know, uh, <coughs> mental illness or not, all right? Two to the back of the head. I agree with mental illness because you can't do anything, but we do need, and I think they even addressed that. And um, I think I was watching MSNBC, and they were saying that the mental um, health of the United, I mean, the United States is not very good. It's not. They said because a lot of people are under the radar. They're under the radar for being bipolar. They're under the radar for being manic depressants. They're under the radar for being. Um, What's the other one? Schizophrenic. I mean, they have all these issues because back to the case that you were talking about, it is even a um, worse scenario, too, because what he did was he took each of the kids that he killed and he killed them in front of her mm -hmm. while she was gagged. So she watched her children die. So when you go back to, like you say, he had a history and was it mental or whatever it was? We should have tax dollars available to keep up with these people to make sure that they're being, you know, they're making good decisions, but we're not doing it. It seemed like it fell apart when we closed down all the mental institutions. Yes, it, it seemed did. like that's where the disconnect came is when mm -hmm. we closed on all of them because then they just start walking up. I have tenants that to me mentally, they should not live by themselves the way that they think, the way that they do stuff. But then I see another thing is that where they have the death penalty and, and that puts me on a fence because I don't believe in this kind of stuff but in um, Texas where they have the death penalty the crime is down because they know they don't play there they're gonna just you know they just gonna take care of it but it's like the crime it's like when people commit their crime they're not really worried about the consequences of what they do mm -hmm. because I was watching um, I don't remember what the name of the show was, but it actually featured a unsolved case that was in Flint Brown. You know, the little boy Brown that was found in a water. Yes. Yes. Did you see that? Mm -mm, that was it. awesome mm -hmm. because what they did was this wasn't a regular case of this. That mother, the stepmother was jealous of him. Right. And her mm -hmm. and her brother killed him. Mm -hmm. But it was another lady that mm -hmm. knew about it. They kept a secret all these years. To me, all of them should be in jail. Right. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. she held the secret because she was there when they were doing this. They fed him um, rubbing alcohol, mm -hmm. a whole bottle of rubbing alcohol. And she knew that he wasn't even, you know, something was wrong, but she never reported it. This is the one they found in Detroit, I mean, in the Flint River. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They just solved it, what, two years ago? Yeah. It was open for, what, 20 some years? Mm -hmm. So my point is, some of it is mental. But some of it's just malice. Mm -hmm. You know, you have just issues. I mean, jealousy can turn into an ugly thing. Absolutely. But it's a part of all of us, and we know that. And great novels and stories have been written about these um, uh, issues that go on within us. Right. And what, is, what are the circumstances for you, Ron, that you would kill a child by putting it in the microwave? What circumstance? No. What? what Hang on, you don't know yet. But if you were in the situation of this man or woman who did this, there's something had to go wrong in her life to do that, to watch a baby scorch and pop 
in a microwave. Yeah, wow. <clears throat> mental illness. <clears throat> well, mental illness. Something broke. And what's wrong with the whole country right now? Well, I'm telling They're you. They're mad. They're sad. No. Uh, hang on, hang on. No, let, me, let me try to put this together. Because there's a lot going on in the country. And we're not the people that we once were. We've changed. No, we have. We have. Yeah. Part of it, even we'll even go back to social media. People have become meaner yes, in their are. comments and things like that because they're not necessarily identified. Some of them put their dogs up or some other face up or do oh, something wow. so they, mm -hmm. they're not identified. So they can say anything and everything yeah. that they feel in their mm -hmm. heart, mm -hmm. you know. And so the, you know, the, the um, cyber bullying and all of that, it, it, it's our country has has slowly evolved into this real just mean spirited um, at the edge, you know, it's very <clears throat> unfortunate. But when you see strangers now, and you can kind of look and kind of gauge whether you even want to speak. Whereas before, you know, you pretty much would speak to any person who would walk down the street or whatever, but you don't know what's going to set a person off. Because like I said, that mental illness thing has, has taken off. And yes, here in Michigan, particularly since they set uh, uh, aside and, and closed up all of the institutions. And Engler was. Yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. we, we he understand. Was, we, was we, we remember, I remember yeah. seeing them being closed up and people being forced out of those places. And some of them were real pits. We get mm -hmm. that. But we know that now without all of the resources and funding that's necessary, there are some people that we know that need to be taking medication medication, they refuse to take their medication. Mm -hmm. And when you have people like that, <clears throat> you have shots that can be offered, but if they're not, then you have to deal with this whole involuntary process. So you have to have uh, family members or people who know them because sometimes they're disconnected from families that have to go through. So there's this process that's in place that is so convoluted that we don't do what we need to do to help those that are in need. I know that you must come into contact in your profession. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. There's a lot of kids. <clears throat> kids and adults. Are, have to take medication, held all or some of that. Yes, yes. And in school. Yes. They will fight, they will pick up a teacher and slam them and stuff like that. Um, and we have a higher incident rate today of those kind of kids than we had ever before. Mm -hmm. And the population is still growing. And yet, we're not at a point where resources are scarce yet. We're not at a point where we're crowded together like rats in a box. Mm -hmm. And yet we have all of this stuff going on that's driving us to rage. Can and I say all of us. Can I ask a question here? What causes this? I mean, I know you're not an expert in terms of, you know, psycho I mean, maybe you are, psychology, psychiatry, uh, social work or something like that. What causes uh, 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 a parent or uh, or a, a person just you know to do things like that. If I mean, I know it's you know we could say mental illness, mm -hmm. but, but there's there there's it's a quiet storm. Mm -hmm. And I'll just bring back the fact back in the early '80s we had a conference. This uh, Association of Black Social Workers had a conference here in Flint, and there was a professor by the name of Carl Taylor, who predicted, he wrote his thesis, his, his uh, dissertation on what was going on in Detroit as it related to those persons who were involved with the drug trade and how the drug trade, you know, particularly crack cocaine at that particular time, had just decimated communities. But it also had decimated uh, individuals in the terms of the women who were birthing children who were crack addicted. And those kids have now grown up. Oh, wow. Those kids are now grown. Mm -hmm. And so this is what you're seeing. And if those kids didn't get the help that they needed, besides getting the immediate attention that when they were born, because they had to be weaned off the drug or whatever, but then there were some maybe psych psychiatric or psychological um, uh, problems that developed that may not have been um, identified. And just the kids grew up, and now here you have... And he called them. These will be our future Frankensteins. So now we mm -hmm. have... You know, these kids who may not have gotten the attention, the medication, the nurturing, and all the rest of that kind of stuff is needed. And so <clears throat> they don't have a problem with because there's no, there was no filter developed mm -hmm. for them. So they don't have a, a, a way of differentiating 
really what's right and what's wrong. So the frustration comes in, they're upset, they can't parent, they don't know how to parent. Oh, so right. you can see why a person did this. You don't agree with it, absolutely you don't, but you don't see what got that person to that point. And I dare to say that that's one of those scenarios. Okay. I would dare to say that. That, that is a great analogy because I heard somebody else was talking about we are living with the kids that parents were on crack back in the day. Mm -hmm. and, and as we run into different parents and as you go to the schools or whatnot, and then when you talk with them, this is what they'll tell you. Well, this is what we do at home. Mm -hmm. Because if you go to their houses... And because I'm a, you know, a landlord, I go to their houses. It's so dysfunctional because they're so used to dysfunction. They don't even know what's what, what it could be because they're hollering at them. They're, and he hollering at them back. It was a little boy. And I can tell he had a mental issue. And when I, you know, and, and she's yelling at him and she's yelling at him and he is gone. He's just looking up. Mm -hmm. He wasn't even there, but she's calling me. He didn't answer when the first few went round off. So she got to call him everything. I said, can I just go get him? Mm -hmm. Because he's not responding because he's shut down. Yeah. I said, can I go get him? I went out and got him and, and we took a walk through. And when I got him back, he was just smiling because he had just left that place and mm -hmm. went to a happy place because you could tell he's in that place too much. Mm -hmm. And so people disconnect when they have. And then I see that. And that's why I try to teach as much as I can. You guys, if it didn't work for you, mm -hmm. why would you give that? It's because that's all they had to give. That's, That's all, all they, they know. have to give. That's all they know. Their parents didn't have any time for them. They don't have any time for their kids. Their parents didn't want to take them to the doctor to get diagnosed. They won't take their kids to get diagnosed. They won't take their medication. They won't make their kids take their medication. So we suffer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and so it's as though our hands are tied because mm -hmm. the parenting is what's really hurting us is because these kids are parenting kids and they don't have a clue of what they're doing. Exactly. We can show by the, you know, scores in school, grades in school, their behavior in school. They don't answer well to authority. That's why they walk around like, who can tell me what to do? No one has ever told me mm -hmm. what to do. Yeah. They don't respect authority. They don't want a job because they don't want anybody telling them what to do. They don't connect job money. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they don't connect those two and it doesn't matter. They'd rather be broke than somebody tell them what to do because this is what the standards were in their house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah we have the question is, should the death penalty be brought back? After this good discussion, <clears throat> I still hold my position that I'm, I'm not ready for that yet. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not. not. Particularly in light of the fact that there were so many people who, through this Project Innocence, have been found, you know, not guilty. Right. Okay. So we're not going to be, you know, putting out this broad brush and saying, you know, yes, this was a heinous act. There's no question about it. Will you bring these people back? No. You won't bring them back. You have a family or two or maybe three that have been destroyed. Because you got to think about that man, that crazy man that did that. He has family and all of them are not crazy. That's right. All of them are not. And I'm sure that they feel pain and anguish from what he has done and what he did to the previous wife. OK, so, I mean, you got to think, I mean, this thing is much bigger and much broader. And yeah. to say, you know, we can sit here and we can be angry and say, yes, you know, death. You know, and in other countries, if that is their norm, so be it. But here in America, it has been used too much yeah. with in, it, it, with partiality mm -hmm. and vengeance against a, a race of people and all of that. So I am very much saying, you know, let's really take a hard look at that. Well, um, you know, my, my position is still, yes, uh, mm -hmm. I, I believe in the death penalty mm -hmm. with people, as I indicated, what they've done to, these, to their children. All right. Um, uh, that's the point I'm trying to make. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. there's no uh, uh, ands and buts about this guy that killed, uh, you know, uh, uh, his two stepchildren and, and his two biological. Mm -hmm. There's no uh, uh, question about this about uh, this woman, you know, putting her child in a microwave oven. There's no, uh, um, there's no uh, um, question about um, uh, this woman uh, killing her kids and putting them in, the, you know, in the freezer. You know, those things like that. That's 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 my point. That's who I'm after. Those those they can be crazy as hell if they want to be. 
No, they were, they were all, see, all of them go. were, all of them were crazy. Mm -hmm. right. We gotta go. We crazy see. is not the word, but well, you, dysfunctional, well, right, okay? Right. <laughs> they wouldn't have to worry about being dysfunctional any further But anymore. even on the other hand, too, we do have those dysfunctionals where they're just, you know, you're doing things out of malice. You got some issues going on, you're hearing sure. voices or whatever. Back to what you're saying, it's just not being healthy. But also you have situations where I think that we did a lot of when um, Engler came and closed down those mental institutions, he also restricted the funds. So now you have all of these um, group homes. Mm -hmm. But OK, it's not the same format because group homes, you can go in and come out when you want to. So you have access to people, even if you're not taking your medication. Well, inside of the institutions, you had to take your medication or they had you at least in a building where they can watch you. Now, these people are free to roam around. They won't go home if they don't want to go home. And the group home, a lot of them people in there and not all of you guys don't get all upset. But a lot of people just sleeping <laughs> when they're in there. They're not. I went to the movies and somebody brought some a whole bunch of people to the movies and they're in there cussing and yelling at the screen <laughs> so they can see the movie. You know, I'm sure it was supposed to be a movie they wanted to see. But, you know, there's problems in everything we do, but it seems like we need to restore the funding. Yes, absolutely. Restore the funding because he cut all of that money out, but we pay we pay for it more than we wanted to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we need to restore what was working. Yeah, that yeah. was working. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so, and we already know that a lot of the people who end up in the criminal justice system came be from the mental health. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, they said the meds that they offer at prison is just like having a mental ward. Mm -hmm. They said most of the people in um, prison are on mental, I mean, you know, they Thorazine. have... Thorazine. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, 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 yeah, there's other medicines, but it's equivalent mm -hmm. to the yeah. Thorazine to shut you they down. They said that when, when yeah. the morning comes, I was watching the show and was saying when the morning comes, they said mostly everybody has to come by and get something, something. to maintain because mm -hmm. it's something wrong. Yeah. So to me, go back to the source. Where did the problem start? It started when you closed down the mental institutions where they had a place that was safe. They didn't have to worry about surviving or they didn't have to worry about any of that because they were taken care of. Mm -hmm. Everything is not worth cutting dollars. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to just share this with you. There, did you read the story about one parent criticized the school for locking her child up for um, having violent behavior? Did you read that a couple of days ago? No. no. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I recall in certain circumstances where kids are so violent mm -hmm. and when they're about 12, 13, 14, that um, they lock them up in the room and that's almost against the law. You can't isolate right, the kids, right. you know that. <clears throat> but they go in and beat their heads against the wall like mm -hmm. that. Or they have a big punching bag that they punch and act out this violent behavior. Now, that ought to be telling you something about what is wrong with the population. And this goes on frequently. Mm -hmm. you, you see many more kids in special education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and they have to be treated. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I was a, I was a um, worker at Willie Children's Center. Yeah. <clears throat> and I can tell you that that's what we dealt with. We had self-contained classes. Mm -hmm. We had a small class size. All of them were special education. Did you like the kids up? No. What happened was we were there on duty because we knew the kids were going to act out. And mm -hmm. typically it was desk turned over. They were having some yeah. kind of episode and we would remove the child so that the rest mm -hmm. of the class could learn. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that was just a part of it. Because, you know, you got that segment, but a lot of those kids don't make it there. You know what I mean? They don't yeah. get there. Those mm -hmm. kids are still out there in, 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 the, population. in, in the population. Yeah. So, like I said, this is a serious problem. Whereas we have multitude of um, mentally disturbed children. We have children who have been um, not diagnosed. Some that have had the results of uh, drug inducement. You know, and now you've got this whole other slew of folks that are coming through that are opiate dependent. What will do? What will happen to their kids? I've had mothers mm -hmm. that are, you know, were pregnant and came in and had to have their children two or three months down the way to to be taken off of the drug. You know what that? I can't even imagine 
You know, I mean, you and I, so all of us sitting here, a child being born and then it's opiate dependent and it has to be weaned off yeah. the drug. You know what I'm saying? So where's the mindset? Where The mother is messed up. The child is messed up. And so this is what we've got going on in this society That's today. Right. That's mm -hmm. right. You know, mm -hmm. so it's it's deep. It's More deep. than we want to admit It's to. deep. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. very deep. Mm -hmm. And the funding is very low. Yeah. The yeah, funding yeah. is very low, mm -hmm. but we're still going to have the problem mm -hmm. because it's not going anywhere because mm -hmm. we're not doing anything to resolve it. Mm -hmm. We're not penalizing parents enough. Mm -mm. I know parents that came and dropped dirty when they had a kid and they still got their mm -hmm. kid because they want to do the reunification mm -hmm. and Sometimes they don't need to be reunited. Sometimes we need to be firm on what we're saying to them and say hey you you're messing up mm -hmm. This child deserve a clean chance, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so sometimes I understand restoring because I worked for Ennis and I I would see it more than I wanted to, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. they would restore families and, and a lot of times they shouldn't have been restored and you see mm -hmm. them in a system later. There you go. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because they're not, they're not ready. No. They're not ready. Mm -mm. No, no, they suffer too mm -hmm. much. So to answer your question in regards to this whole death penalty thing, mm -hmm. I think that our society is sick, too sick. And I don't think that that is an answer, particularly in Michigan. We need more stuff. Well, no, it's not. Yeah. It's not a. It's not a, a, a total answer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, again, I, I, I'm talking about wow. those those situations where, you know, uh, mm -hmm. there is no doubt in a, in a person's mind. You know what I mean, or authorities mind that this is they in fact are the ones that did it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and mm -hmm. I understand that a lot of people have been exonerated. You know what I mean mm -hmm. uh, with the Innocence Project. I'm not speaking in in, in terms of that, all no. right? Because there's still thousands that are that are incarcerated right now that are innocent. Okay, right. mm -hmm. and again, I've brought this up before on, on other shows. Is that you know that them doggone prosecutors that withhold us information. All right, they and them, them they themselves should go to jail or go mm. to prison. Right. Okay. Right. But right. this has been a very wonderful uh, right. conversation. I've learned a lot, and I uh, hope you two uh, out in uh, TV land ha also have. Uh, this is Ronald Barry Robinson uh, for the In My Opinion Show and friends saying saying stay focused. <laughs>